Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I've got a two versus two for you today. It is on Seton's Clutch, and it's an internal match with the SFO clan. All four guys from the same clan ranked 1,700 through 2,000. All familiar names, Voodoo, Embers, Kosher, and Mephi. Got a quick announcement before we jump into the initial builds, as you're probably already seeing because it's Saturday and you have a cast instead of a live stream announcement. There's no live stream. I messed up. It is completely on me. I totally forgot that I am going to be out of town this weekend, so I'm pre-recording a little bit of entertainment for you guys, so hopefully the lack of content does not make you incredibly angry with me, even though the ones that like to tune in for the live cast, I'm sure, are not going to be entirely happy with me. I will be making up a live cast at the beginning of next week, and the regularly scheduled live cast will happen next Saturday, same map, same time, all of that stuff just delayed one week. So hopefully you guys can forgive me, it was a mistake, I am only human, please let me off the hook at least for this one. Alright, as far as the matchup goes, we've got a symmetrical faction matchup, we've got two Cybern Beaches and two Seraphim Rocks. And I find that kind of interesting from the faction balance standpoint because you have the weak navy position with the strong navy and the strong navy position with the weak navy because Seraphim navy objectively sucks in the current balance. Anyway, Voodoo is on the top left. Looks like he's going for a pretty standard build, actually. Um, first land, couple P-Gens running to the Hydro will probably throw down an air factory at some point. You don't really need to worry about stealing the island. Well, you could. It would definitely be something that you could turn into an advantage because you'd have a staging area right next to your opponent's base. But you have all of this other expansion to do into the map because you're two players short. So not really any extreme urgency on getting to that island. Definitely don't need to cripple your early build to do so. Then on the rock, we've got Mef or not Mephi, Embers taking a pretty standard build as well. He is throwing down some extra P gens. Got an air factory that was planned, but apparently he has decided to walk and reset his build queue. There's the air factory. It is going back down. Then we've got lots of land factories for Kosher. Looks like he is probably rushing the middle. Um, yes, that is that factory is already queued for center. They're going to be rushing land units up that way and then Mephi is on a pretty standard build as well actually looks exactly identical to what Embers is doing if you see two borderline 2k players doing the exact same thing in the same position on the same map you can probably assume that it's a good idea so everybody jump on that meta now go right now no well, okay not actually go ahead and watch this is obviously going to be a little bit more slow-paced, drawn-out game, seeing as it is set in a 20k map with only four people on it. Hopefully we'll get something good out of it, though, as it moves forward. So we've got some Mantis moving out. Those guys are going to bum-rush the center. And, of course, there's still all of the reclaim that's normally there on the Settens map. So, yeah, more per player, because there's less people to split it, as long as you can actually secure it. Voodoo has sent a single lethargic engineer all the way down here who is going to be building mass extractors all the way towards the tip down that way. And yeah, no factories planned. So apparently he is planning on sending another engineer, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe he planned on sending a second one and forgot. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. But some way or another, he has got to lock down this area. Mephi is wasting no time. He has got a tank, an arty, and three engineers rushing to mid, trying to get all of the mass that he can get his little tractor beams on, and that is going to feed his coffers, upgrade his mass extractors, and hopefully get him in the water very, very quickly. This is not an unusual standard sentence build. Um, basically, instead of sending the drop to the island, he sent it to the front, which is actually a really useful tool uh, pulling from the meta because when you reclaim the trees when you use your five rocks out here that have already been grabbed by embers You're obviously going to be able to get an early drop out no matter what Might as well send that drop to mid if you're in the 2v2 Looks like those four engineers are going to be throwing down a point defense and then a whole bunch of land factories Hopefully they will be able to deny this push which is not looking too healthy for the north team There's not many units there, but everything is scouted. They've got air cover They do have a t1 artillery that Zooey is going to be able to lay down some fire on that point defense Possibly even knock out the engineers before the factory even finishes. Is that what he's doing? 
It does not look like it. Looks like he's going after the point defense. Well, there's already a tank advantage, so I think that will be fine. T1 Bomber rolling on in there, and we've got Voodoo finally laying down a factory right there. So, is the point defense going to die? One more shell. That is enough shells in the air to kill it, I think, as long as this one connects. No! The inaccuracy of the artillery bites again. And that bomber is going to have a good old time killing not only our, the artillery, but several engineers as well. So, hey, everybody's stalled in the middle. But there is going to be a run by. We've got Mantis moving up on the left-hand side. Those should be able to skirt around everything and knock out all those mass extractors that were so carefully laid out by Voodoo. Shame, oh shame, that stuff like that happens. Such a pretty mass extractor. It'd be a shame if something happened to it believe is the correct quote. There goes the point defense, finally landing an artillery shell on it, but those engineers are already well established. Voodoo's still trying to build his land factory with that single, solitary, lonely engineer, and there's a awesome bomb. That is going to be four kills at once for Mephi. I do like the Seraphim T1 bomber. It is very, very easy to use. I don't know if it's the easiest to hover bomb with, but I do like the consolidated AOE and the fact that I don't have to worry about units like not quite dying from UEF napalm, things like that. Basically, if you hit it, it's dead. No bones about it. This is a really good push right here. All of these Mantis are going to be headed, looks like for the triple max expansion that way possibly up towards the back of the map. That could get nasty because there is nothing in the way of denial for Voodoo. We do have a T2 factory, which is currently building a Rhino. I think it would take two Rhinos to kill all those, unless it can engage them in a strung out manner. And I do not mean Rhinos on drugs. Let's see, in the middle here, got some Thams engaging, but you know what? We always need more hunters because I don't know why. There are seven hunters. Six hunters. No, there are seven. Why are there seven hunters? That is incredibly useless. I don't know why they were built, but apparently there was a reason when they were constructed. Maybe that was intended to be a ghetto gunship at some point, and then they realized that, hey, we may not have enough interceptors to defend that transport. So let's uh, just rush those up to the front and pretend that they're tanks, and hopefully they can get something done. Let's say we got two Mantis moving towards the back. No, those are Hunters. My bad. So Hunters are useful. I've been looking at them the entire time, and because it's the Cyber Infaction, I had assumed that they were Mantis, because who in their right mind would be using Hunters at the back end of the map at this late in the game? But hey, it's working out. Learn something from Kosher. Even on a 20 kilometer map, at eight minutes into the game, labs can be useful. <laughs> Who'da thunk it? That is actually quite a couple of little engineer skills there. That is a Mantis though. A dead Mantis, that is. T1 Bomber gonna mop that up, no problemo whatsoever. And Hunters are, well, if both of you guys fired at the same mass extractor, you would actually kill one. But apparently, two at once is better than once finished. I am waiting for the T2 engagement to start in the middle, because that is when the fun starts. It looks like Voodoo is going to be the one bringing T2 units to the party, and it is going to be a very, very slow trickle of tanks. And there is a single Rhino still headed for the back, still after those hunters. Heroic Engineer probably sent in to try to reclaim those guys. But they weren't actually focus fired on the mass extractor, so as soon as that engineer came into view, pop, it is down. T1 bomber acting very strangely. I think that is probably going to loop around and not hit again. I'm not sure what that was all about. Ah, there we go. And dead mantis. Well done. Nice shot. Over here on this side, we have a frigate intruding into Kosher's base, probably attempting a Navy denial, but you know, not really going to work when you have three times your combat force sitting right off of your bow and it is nailing you to the seafloor. There's a T2 upgrade going down for Kosher, which is going to make life very interesting for Embers. The Cybern T2 Navy is massively superior to Seraphim in nearly every way, and once you get to T3, 
things get interesting. Technically, Cybern units are stronger. You do have the kiting capabilities of the T3 sub. I would say the battleships are roughly even, but I tend to favor the Cybern because it can deal with hover spam on its own without support units, which is amazing. It's the only battleship that can do that. I like the audacity of this drop. However, there are five interceptors in a hot pursuit, so I don't think that it can get anywhere fast enough to avoid dying in a catastrophic manner. And there he goes. All hands lost. No time for parachutes. Someone needs to add parachutes to Supreme Commander. That would be epic. You could have hot drops crashing a transport into the edge of a cliff and all of the units just scatter out into the base. Actually, that may already be a mod. I am not entirely sure. It might not even be possible because of some of the docking mechanisms with Supreme Commander. Not sure. Anyway, that is entirely beside the point. You do not want to hear that ramble. What you do want to hear about is the epic frigate rush going on over here on Voodoo's Navy. He is tearing into Mephi's production. There is, let's see, one frigate about to come off, a T2 upgrade that just got finished, and a couple of torpedo launchers in the back end that are trying to do something useful. That is exactly what Cybern is good at. They have by far the best bang for the buck in frigates. They can provide their own anti-air support basically without any need for interceptors because a group of frigates of that size can even drop a couple of torpedo bombers, which is awesome. And since there's a T2 factory online that really hasn't built any units, that's going to be a waste of mass for Mephi. However, these frigates have not been able to get to all of the engineers, which are still laying down torpedo defenses like mad. Those are gradually going to pick away at the Cybern frigates. Will they get the T2 naval factory? We will have to see. For this to be worth it, he really needs to kill the T2 factory. If he doesn't kill that, this is basically a mass dump. He's going to leave all those frigate wrecks, and there it goes. So no T2 factory for Mephi. We do have a T2 factory with a half-built destroyer for Voodoo, so I think we can qualify this as a Cyber Navy win. That is looking very strong for Voodoo. And in the middle, there has been a nice recovery. At the very beginning... Kosher and Mephi were able to mop up just about all of the mass in the middle, but the T2 units from Voodoo really made a difference as far as the T1 spam is concerned right there. Um, they are going to be able to push everything back, and we can actually take a look at the reclaim numbers here. Uh, Voodoo sitting on 8,000, Embers on 7,200, Mephi at 11,000, and 12,000 for Kosher. So a couple of thousand advantage towards the South team per player, which at 12 minutes into the game is a pretty dang big deal. As far as the actual income goes, Voodoo is still reclaiming, but he is at a paltry 58 mass per tick. Embers is on one, it looks like 97 and bouncing all over the place with reclaim. So both of these guys on sub 100, Mephi is at 95 mass per tick, and Kosher at 118. So Kosher is currently in the lead on economy, which is kind of weird. You usually expect the Rock player to be that way, but I think Rock was over-investing into a Navy recovery in hopes of denying this frigate rush, which temporarily, at least, he has. We'll have to see how well that holds once the destroyers start moving in there. We've got some T2 torpedo bombers kind of winging it around there. Maybe they will be able to provide some assistance because there's not much air. Well, not much air for the south side. There is a disturbingly large pack of interceptors winging its way around for the north team. So those torpedo bombers are probably not going to be very long lived. Already starting to shred through those frigates. The strong eco is going to make it kind of tough for Voodoo because his opponent has a lot more mass income and Embers is kind of in the same boat but not quite as bad off as Voodoo is. 
Um, basically, the North team is going to have to make it up and reclaim, which is entirely possible because they did secure all of this landmass and they are reclaiming and building mass extractors. So they may be able to make this work. We do have a T3 bot out. Kosher has dropped T3 land. He's going to be pushing out Loyalists, which are amazing because they are speedy, can catch up to just about anything, and they're going to be able to work with some of this stuff. Mephi really needs to get an overcharge in here. Well paid attention for Voodoo because he has been able to skirt that ACU with literally one shot fired. He recognized the commander was there. He went right around it, and he is going to be able to rip apart the back end of this base no problem whatsoever. Combined force of Kosher and Mephi engaging a small portion of Voodoo's air. Was that the entirety? Yes, it was. The entirety of Voodoo's air and slaughtering it. However, Embers does have a huge amount of interceptors himself. Let's see, we've got one destroyer, two destroyers in the water at the moment. Torpedo bombers from Embers now taking a pass. Not that there's much to shoot at because, yeah, there's a whopping three frigates on the front line and one in the back. We do have a destroyer producing, so things could start getting a little hairier considering the economy that Mephi has at his fingertips. But when you're building from behind, when you already are at this big a disadvantage in Navy unit count, it is a hard uphill battle because as fast as you build... As fast as you create build power, it is going to get knocked back down. A little bit of a Navy engagement on the south side. Sorry for anybody whose uh, ears I just explodified. That destroyer is going to be severely outmatched by the two and a cruiser for Kosher. So I think this is going to be a thorough beatdown of the Orange Navy. That is going to have to retreat at some point in the near future. Otherwise, nope. Yeah, let's just give all the mass to the south side. That sounds like an awesome plan. We can just do that. The T3 units were a successful denial tool. We have a little bit of a pullback on units. Embers and Voodoo just kind of going to reclaim what they can. Field the units just close enough to discourage any intrusions. And look at that. Look at that. We've got to drop three Ilshavas and four Zooies. That is going to absolutely wreck the south expansion. And those guys will be able to continue up into various and sundry portions of the map, hopefully causing massive damage as they proceed. Lots of navy moving in on Mephi's build power, but this is slightly disheartening. It doesn't look good due to these torpedo launchers. Once again, focus firing the T2 Naval Factory, which at this point is just a damaged sponge. This destroyer and these torpedo launchers are really giving Voodoo a hard time, laying down so much damage on his Navy, down to three factories and just a couple of engineers. Thankfully, the kiting on those destroyers is going to be able to let him kind of stand back a little bit do more damage and not have to worry about losing any more units than he just did but yeah this that was I think a net loss for Voodoo because he'd lost almost a hundred percent of his frigates and all he gained was some build power killed Mephi is still rocking it on the eco as long as he doesn't get forced completely out of the water I think he will be okay Jesters and T2 gunships dealing with all of those units, um, not s any significant damage. Just those three original mass extractors, and that is that. N yet another naval engagement on this side. Embers is bringing in some hover arty. Unfortunately, there is still way too much navy there for him to be messing with. We've got two, three destroyers and a cruiser along with a nice little pack of T1 subs and Cybern frigates. So I don't think I would be messing with that until I built up a critical mass of units that could actually handle the pressure. Loads of interceptors coming in for Mephi. Those are going to be covering the T2 gunships that are trying to knock down those destroyers that are harassing his build power. Torpedo launchers going down very, very slowly, but they are going down. Torpedo bombers, yes, moving south. 
to knock out this destroyer, which has already taken out one mass extractor and is trying to take out a second. But this factory is once again acting as a damage shield. I say once again, there is once again a factory acting as a meat shield. It's amazing how often that comes into play. I wonder what v what Embers is doing. Just kind of chillaxing over in the back there. Hmm. Anyway, factories. It. It's awesome how often factories determine the outcome of a battle in kind of roundabout ways, but understandable ways. That was an epic air win for Embers. Holy cow. Although it looks like he is out of fuel on quite a lot of his air units. All of those wrecks sinking to the bottom there. So many. It's like ASF spam, but many. We had basically two situations where someone came in with a massively superior naval force and focus firing the T2 factory, which granted was important. The T2 factory did need to die for it to be worth it. Um, but yeah, that T2 factory allowed Mephi to stay in the water strictly because of the amount of HP and how long it took to kill that factory. And I see it all the time in land battles where just engaging the enemy inside your factories allows you to win with an inferior number of units because of the collision mechanics. You don't have friendly fire firing out at other units, but those units firing in at your combat units will hit the factory. So, yeah, perfect meat shield situation. Strap bomber coming in right there, knocking out one cruiser successfully, but the second one will drop it. Cruisers definitely doing the work they're supposed to. Looks like Embers is struggling to field enough of a navy to deal with Kosher's intrusion. We do have three destroyers online still with that one cruiser. So it's going to have to wait to confront that until he can get a few destroyers up, which is kind of hard at the moment because he does not have that much build power down there. Ember is pulling 156 mass per tick, which is actually the highest on the board at the moment. Kosher is at 125, 69 still for Voodoo, giggity, and 164, which has got to be a reclaim number. No, it is not. That puts him at the top. Holy kashmoles, that is an economic powerhouse. Looks like Embers is power stalling at the moment. Not cool. All right, 14,000 ring claim, 12,000 ring claim. Mephi at 22 and Kosher at 27. So not only do these guys have massive ecos, they also have double the reclaim of their opponents. That much of a mass difference is a huge deal. Once we're rolling into the mid part of the game, all of the hover units are coming online for Mephi, which thanks to the recent nerf, I actually am in total agreement with that nerf. Um, hover units in massive quantities can still push at Navy and allow you to re-establish yourself, but they do not act so overpowered that you can win Navy with hover. It just doesn't work because once you get a little ways back, the naval units will start kiting and all that hover is going to die. So I think this is a fairly solid game mechanic as opposed to the OP hover that we have been dealing with pretty often for the last little bit. I like this strap bomber in the back as well. There is a nice little clump of ASF just kind of sitting there waiting for Kosher to notice that he has a strap bomber knocking out his T2 mass extractors in the back. And there it is. What was that? Three mass extractors? And finally going to drop before the fourth. Nice damage done to Embers on this side. That is going to knock him down a peg or two on his income. He does have all these T2s in the back, which is going to save him from any kind of mass stall. But any reduction that you're able to do is a dang good thing. Let's see here. It looks like we've got T3 air going down for Mephi. I don't see any plans for a T4. No, we don't. Just moves to T3 air and a little bit more dangerous toys being brought into play. This left navy is intriguing me. Because basically what I'm saying is 
superior units managed in a superior way by voodoo. Well, let me take that back. The two factory collisions for that force were disastrous. So I think things probably could have been handled better there. But as you can see here, he is retreating at a little bit of a diagonal, trying to allow his units to fire. He's doing his best to kite all of the hover units. He is securing himself just like you should versus any kind of hover. Um, it is superior units managed well. And that is triumphing over a superior economy. But I think we just hit the tipping point a minute or two ago because Mephi now has his build power in the water. He was able to get all these T2 factories online, which was able to push Voodoo's navy back. I have no doubt that Voodoo will reestablish control and be able to stop that hover spam once he gets enough of his units clumped up. But uh, yeah, now that Mephi is back in the water in force, that economic difference is going to make all the difference in the world. Destroyer going down for Embers, just not able to get enough units up to deny. This is what Voodoo was shooting for. He was going for a critical mass of naval units parked on top of the build power in a manner that prevented anything new from building. You may not have as many units, you may not have as much economy, but if you can lock the build power and prevent your opponent from using the mass, then you've effectively accomplished the same goal as destroying his entire economy. But it just did not work out for Voodoo because Mephi was able to push that back by the skin of his teeth, whether that be on Voodoo's mistake or his own merit, I am not going to call. Whereas Koshur on the right hand side was able to get that critical mass of units up and now we're seeing the damage that that can cause. Embers at 178 income, Koshur at 3, actually 220, not allowing for reclaim, but the reclaim is massive. 41,000 reclaim for Kosher, Mephi at 34,000, and we've got 18,000 for Embers and 15,000 for Voodoo, so yes, the position on the scoreboard is directly related to how much reclaim you have, which I think is actually a pretty dang good uh, measure of a person's game. Let's go ahead and bump up the speed a little bit here. We're seeing a little bit of a regression on Voodoo's side. Like I predicted, he is still maintaining control. He is now forcing that Navy back. Navy, huh? It's entirely comprised of hover units. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit of an engagement in the middle. Five bricks going to easily be able to deal with the T3 tanks. The problem is all the Ilshavas and the shields. Both the shields are down. Looks like we've got artillery going down as well. And the Ilshavas coming in down to three bricks. But another is going to come in for reinforcements. And I think these guys will be fine. A vet on that brick and almost a vet on that one. Is he going to make it? Nope. No veterancy for you, my friend. But you will go down to fire. Oh, well. They did their job. They have secured the middle. I think they will be fine. Over on the right-hand side, the Salems have finished wrecking the base here. So they are going to start moving up on land, try to take out the T2 power, move through the base, do as much damage as is possible. Dropping engineers over here. Kosher doing an awesome job of keeping up with all of his reclaim. So, yeah, that is definitely something that you should be doing at all points during the game. You can see he's already got engineers over here and here as well. So, well played by both sides. I mean, I'm seeing so much good stuff happening, but the bottom side just seems to be executing a little bit better. The frigate rush was a little stronger, the unit micro was a little bit better for the beach player, and then the economy was just so much stronger for the rock player on this side. He is still struggling to hang on to his navy, but good lord, the field of interceptors that is coming in is massive. That was also a equally large group of interceptors that was just slaughtered by the ASF from Kosher. And I do like all of these drops that are being worked with in the back. We've got T2 tanks and some Artie and a T2 tank over here. I have no idea why this keeps hitching. 
That is very, very strange. I'm going to have to investigate once I'm over with this. Embers trying to push those away. I think we're actually starting to see the wrap here because, yep, there we go. T2 fighter bombers coming in. There is no air force left for denial. Voodoo is being overrun with hover tanks. Not able to secure his holdings. T3 gunships moving in. Ember's going to go down. That is game, folks. Game set and match. All right. I was probably not as observant that game as I should have been, but I hope you guys got something out of it. 2v2 is kind of fun to watch on a map like this. I like the larger ones because you can, it, it's not so hectic because you have fewer people to watch, but there's a lot of solid gameplay mechanics going down. I am amazed that Voodoo was able to hold on for that long with as little eco as he had. That was actually very, very impressive. So kudos to him for doing that. He just about, on multiple occasions, pulled Navy Denial on Mephi. The problem was, since he didn't pull Navy Denial, and he was 100% invested in the units that he was putting out, he had no economy. None whatsoever. Sub 100 for the entirety of a 30-minute game on a 20-kilometer map, which is what ended up putting him down, I do believe. We had excellent naval denial for Kosher, and then as soon as he hit the balancing point where he knew that he was going to be able to win that Navy, he just stopped the extremely heavy naval production, which he does still have a lot on it, but he was scaling up his eco and air production as well, and that's what ended up winning it for these guys. Kosher pulling in 288 mass per tick and 311 for Mephi. So eco wins in the end. Eco horning for everyone because that's what we all know wins games. 68,000 reclaim, 37, 20, and 22. Reclaim and eco. That is all that won this game. Alrighty, guys. That is going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully, this will suffice for a Saturday cast. Like I said, I will be doing a live cast the beginning of next week. Just some kind of randomness that I will come up with on the spot Monday or Tuesday or something like that. And then we'll be back on normal casting schedule starting on Tuesday. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.